Collective behaviour is all around us. We see bird flocks, fish schools, animal herds. And what really defines these systems is that there's no global orchestrating power. The individual units are locally communicating with each other, and yet remarkably through these types of communication, we get animal groups being able to synchronize their motion and respond to predators in a way that we just couldn't possibly imagine. We're still fairly bad at predicting collective behaviors. And one of the reasons is that there are many emergent properties, properties that you don't necessarily expect based on the individual components. And that's why many of these systems, even relatively simple organizations like Schools of Fish, are so mysterious to us. Schooling fish have become a very powerful organism for us because, like all other vertebrates, they have to solve many challenges. They live in a dangerous environment that's unpredictable. And they have to take in this complex sensory information and translate that into movement controls. And we don't really understand how these organisms do that. When we observe animals like schooling fish, often their responses to each other are extremely fast. It's like a blur when we watch it. But if we use modern technologies like high-speed video, we can slow time down. We can track the motion of individuals hundreds of times per second. And we can then use computational techniques to understand how each individual takes in this complex sensory information and then translates that to movement decisions in, you know, fractions of a second. There they are. They're scared yeah. of something here, eh? Yeah, exactly. That gives us, for the very first time, the data we need to try to understand how the emergent collective behavior arises from the interactions among the individual components of the system. The technology we're developing here is like building a, a microscope to see inside these collective systems in ways that we couldn't before. What we've built here is a much larger tank than people have previously used. And so what we're forced to do is actually to have a four camera system where the cameras are time synchronized with each other. By stitching these four images together, we get this super resolution, slow motion video footage of how the behavior occurs. And so we can begin to understand these waves that cross the group when predators attack. We can begin to understand much better how individuals process sensory information. One of the big current questions in the field of uh, collective behavior is how the behavior of an individual will influence the behavior of the group. In Elat, we're studying groups of uh, damselfish uh, that are actually, it's a species that is endemic to the Red Sea. The species that I'm studying is forming groups from maybe three to four individuals up to 20 or 30. It's hard to collect data uh, with wild animals in general and to study collectives adds a layer of complexity because we have to be able to track all of them. So. We kind of went for a simple system with few individuals so that we can reach very high level of detail in the observations that we're doing. One of the very nice features of these groups of damselfish is that they are attached to a coral head. So they use this coral head for shelter and they live inside the branches. You can easily set cameras around it. They won't move very far and uh, you can track them in the wild doing their natural behavior. We know that there's dominant individuals, subordinates, there's males, females, there's larger individuals, smaller ones. And right now we're really trying to see how these differences can affect the behavior of the collective. The escape behavior in fish is extremely fast. So we have to shoot in high speed. Filming at 120 frames per second, it takes roughly five to six frames for this fish to go back inside of the coral. 
We observe groups in the wild using three cameras that we place in a triangle around their coral head. And then we start giving them the looming stimuli displayed on an iPad. And if they have access to the looming stimulus when it's triggered, usually they would react and then we can collect data on these escape behaviors. Notably, who reacts first and who reacts second, third, etc., which is our main interest in this study. We can start to analyze who has visual access to whom and who has visual access to our stimuli. And then we can disentangle between information that you can see directly and social information that you obtain through uh, the other members of your group. We're starting with small groups in nature under natural uh, conditions where they face threats every day. But we hope to apply this knowledge once the technology becomes sufficiently advanced to studying groups of hundreds or thousands of individuals where we also know exactly who is whom. One of the things we've discovered looking at animal collectives is ignorance or being uninformed can actually be a very positive thing. We find that having uninformed individuals participating in this decision-making actually democratizes the group decision-making. It prevents extremist individuals from having disproportionate influence. Misinformation can be percolated through human societies, through things like the media, or through you know, broadcasting, where you're broadcasting vast amounts of information, same information to multiple individuals. Now, when you broadcast the same information to multiple individuals, you've eroded the capacity for collective intelligence. Collective intelligence relies on the individual components to gather evidence themselves towards the problem, not be told what to think. And so we find again and again, when we look at animal groups, that in actual fact, you know, they've evolved strategies to avoid having overly correlated information. Unfortunately, in human society, we rely too much, in my opinion, on such information. We can learn something by understanding the dynamics of schooling fish and really then apply that to a wide range of other systems from neural dynamics to social dynamics. And so I think it's that insight that there's a collective intelligence, an intelligence that goes beyond the individual, that's embedded somehow in this collective, that's really become a focus of research in the last few years.